<laughs> okay, thank you, Kristen. <laughs> Has everybody remembered to sign in over here on the table? We have a new lady that came. Yes, we'll get to that. And uh, we also have agendas there if somebody didn't pick one up. What else is over there? No, that's it. So signing sheet for new people and initial sheet for former members. Okay. I'm not allowed to say old members. Right. Yeah. We don't have old members. Old we have members. Long time. <laughs> long time members. Long time. Let's go for long time. Experience. Okay. Yeah, very cool. I like that. Being better. And experience. Okay, well, we do have at least one new person, so we're going to go through introductions. I'm Judy Anderson. I'm a private landowner on the west side, and I have a real interest in all kinds of things that have to do with fire mitigation, because I live in the Wui, I'm sure, even though the Wui isn't defined yet. <laughs> Closer, though. I'm Yura Sakeri. I'm with the DNRC. I'm the co-chair of the council. Um, started here in January. And yeah, I lead the co-lead the council with Judy, but also part of home risk assessments and outreach and anything fire prevention wise. We're doing introductions since we have a new person. Oh, I sat in the wrong place, didn't I? We're going to get you anyway. I'm a longtime member. <laughs> I'm Frank Culper, and I'm both a uh, a landowner, very close to Judy, and um, also with the Bitterroot Climate Action Group. Both. I'm Al Babel, and I'm on the Right to Farm and Ranch Board, and I have a farm in the well. I'm Byron Bonney, I work for Bitterroot Resource Conservation and Development. Here in uh, Hamilton, and uh, we do thinning on private land or we do fire risk. All right, <clears throat> I'm Ken Brewer, I represent uh, Lawrence Fire on the Fire and Marine Council, and and I am the team leader for Fire and Root Community Wildfire Protection Plan Update Team. Yay, no acronym. You actually <laughs> spelled it out. Thank you. That's very helpful for new people. Uh, I'm Laura Jackson. Um, I'm a private landowner. I'm great granddaughter of the Bitterroot Homesteaders. Didn't grow up here. And I'm on the Far in the Root Outreach Team. And I'm on the Bitterroot Climate Action Report. Thank you. These sentences. Yeah. Eric Hoover for Valley County Emergency Manager. I'm Nicole. I'm the new person. <laughs> um, oh, you're putting us through all of this. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm from Florence and I've been out a long time and I just moved back three weeks ago and I'm starting, have started um, Adaptive Fire Escapes, a home hardening and rental space company. Um, and I'm also writing a book for homeowners that I will hopefully have published in by last Friday. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to be developing some professional education courses for contractors, home or not homeowners, contractors, real estate agents, um, like roofers, deck builders, city planners, I'm forgetting someone. Basically, anyone who does anything with a house or built a house or builds neighborhoods, um, I'll be developing a continuing education curriculum for them um, and teaching people how to not die in a wildfire. Because um, I lived in California when that burned down, and that was shouldn't have happened. So, but I've been doing this since 2019. So, well, welcome. I'm just that, and I want to meet all of you. Be your professional friends and have people not dying bitter or elsewhere. <laughs> well, welcome. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. I'm Corey Gary. I'm an associate in Bitter National University Fire Management Specialist in Dry Fire Fuels and Seeds for Matt Young from the Deputy Fire Specialist. My Ian Nicole called today and I was like, I have a place for you to be tonight. So I invited her to the meeting and I'm glad to 
glad that you made it and nice to meet you. Uh, community uh, preparedness and fire prevention specialist for the DNRC Southwestern Red. And you were late, so you get to go last. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Well, Kristen, are you ready to do a financial report? Yeah, I'm up already. Um, information is up. I assume we still have nobody on Zoom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have $844. Available. The only thing we have outstanding right now is pretty much the radio broadcast time, which the man who's walking in is partly in charge of. <laughs> partly in charge of. <laughs> and so. Edward, and Edward in charge of. Oh, okay. So, um, so we are. Um, Spent, which is great. We do have those funds. And I do want to remind everybody that the bitter has been extremely generous. And we've got the evac cards that they paid for. The, uh, we got a resupply of retrofit guides, um, which are sent but have been hard to get a hold of. And we do have billboards that are secured uh, two months in. I believe July and uh, the end of July and through August. Um, that Anna and Mr. We had those funds securing, and so we do have we do have items that aren't represented up there, but that the better has, has helped with as well. So, any questions on that or is the item that I didn't get at least what it was? The red perfect guide. So this uh, wildfire risk or wild wildfire red perfect guide. I think it's the technical. isn't it just home retrofit guide? It might be home. Yeah, I think it it's might a be home retrofit guide. I don't even know about it. There, I would bet you we're going to have some here, but it's the publication that University of Nevada put out a year ago. And delves into ways to retrofit your home. And so, a lot of what Nicole is doing is like, you know, um, if you need to replace your deck, there's some ways to replace it. There's some economical ways. Yes, but it is specific to home farming. And we give that out every time we do an assessment as part of the packet. Great. Are there are any updates to that in terms of materials that are more uh, fire resistant? It's pretty relevant. I, I don't think because they also, uh, you have to walk a fine line. You they cannot promote a specific business, right? So right. They can say fire resistant materials that mimic logs instead of saying, so and so's, you know, um, genetic or engineer. Yeah. And so, um, but I think they're still is extremely relevant to what's out there. Now. Well, my question comes from um, it's a few years old, and I thought there were people working on having new and different materials for homeowners who are building now. Mm -hmm. But I've never been able to find out from local suppliers or even in Missoula what those newer materials are. So I just wondered. Can yeah. you, I think I saw something recently either from Headwaters Economics or from the IMHS. So those are the two places that I've seen a lot of stuff come out about retrofitting and cost and materials. Yeah, that's the headwaters report is the reason I'm asking. It talks about it's just as cheap or same price to build a fire resistant home as not so fire resistant. And I went to suppliers to find out what kind of materials are there so that I could prove what they're saying. And I could not find that proof. So the cement board is one thing to fire resistant. Cement board that's yeah, but that's not new. Well, okay. yeah, and that's, I mean, their analysis is still actually 
from, I believe, a lot of the the items that have been around for a long time. Right. And it is the like the the hardy board, the fiber cement, the right. pipe is where you save money. The roof is what can cost more because it's asphalt. So when you do the analysis, the less you spend on the siding and the more you spend on the roof, evens out to what a non-fire resistant home would be. So on some things, when you buy fire resistant material, you may be paying more, but on other aspects like siding, you will actually be paying less. So, but it's not necessarily the brand new items. It, right. It's that, it's still the same stuff. Okay, that answers my question. I just wondered yeah. if there was new materials coming up. But right. like, but what you're working with too, like if you go to like 50 year rub, which is that's a little more resistant fire resistant material, longer, uh, more of a fiberglass type shingle rather than composition. And so you compare the price between that, where we're at that composition, you're up to 25 to 30. Years. So you, you look at building costs that way, an average amount. Yeah. Okay. The fire safe Montana does have. Uh, Fire resistant home construction guide that, uh, that they have on their website. Don't think it has a lot of costs in it, but it talks about those fire resistant materials that, that you could use to, when you're constructing a home. So I think uh, that's, that's a good resource. But it needs to go a little further in terms of maybe what some of the cost uh, elements are uh, that do those kind of things. Yeah. Okay, so the metal well, to Nicole though. Well, <laughs> that reminded me, I work, I just moved back in Wisconsin, I observed for two years, and I worked at a home improvement store in the building material section. And we had a tiny little corner of our shingle display. And for the life of me, I can't remember, we only sold, I think, three brands. It was hot this morning and then someone else. But there was a new line out from someone. That was supposed to be like, I mean, it was like fifty dollars a square foot, like obscenely expensive. But it was the latest technology for like fire and storm and hail resistant without think without going to metal. Is that fifty dollars a square? Or square? Yeah, that was ten square feet. Yeah, it what I it, or it was fifty dollars a square foot. I don't know. One of the two. It was, it was extreme. Even square sounds like more. Yeah, I don't know. We were selling like regular home morning for like thirty dollars a square. Yeah, so and that was way above what that was. No, the fifty dollars square feet. That's square foot. The ten square feet. Yeah. Um, okay, I didn't mean for us to get too far <laughs> off in the rabbit trail. One quick thing: I just checked with my insurance agent for some information on roofs and metal roofs, even though they're more fire resistant. You pay a premium for metal roofs with insurance companies. A 50 year uh, composite, you get a discount on your insurance. And you don't have to re roof in your lifetime. Yeah. Now, but even though know, metal is more fire resistant, well, it's actually not. <laughs> asphalt and metal are, are honestly about the same. About the same. Yeah, asphalt, if, if applied, if, if built correctly, put on correctly, is very fire resistant. It depends on what your underlayment is. And yeah, a half inch plywood, which is the minimum. But it's like, yeah. And their vulnerabilities to metal, yeah. too. So it's, it's, it's trade offs are not so it's, it's, it's a wash then. Right. The problem with metal is you, you don't get up there and re tighten and replace screws. Yeah. And then you, that's where the problem comes from. That yeah. you have the gap. Yeah, the gaps. You have the gaps. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> sorry about that question. Yeah. Our information that we well, because I'm thinking of the fair booth coming up, and we if we're going to have updated materials, or is it going to be the same stuff we've always had? Just wondered if there was anything new. Yeah, no, that and honestly, University of Nevada, they do be under aware. Also, that has just been updated. I've got some copies of the new one, um, but really not much has changed. They're very good at updating. So, they, and they work closely with IBHS. So to be honest, they will. I have a lot of faith in 
they will update that reference guide within the need of it. Yeah. So I'm fairly comfortable in that. And we'll keep getting copies of that because they limit the amount that, that are printed and sold out of state. So we never get all that we want. So we'll be making like yearly orders. And so we'll be able to get it whenever it is updated part of the press. So. Okay. All right. So do we want to talk about, you were talking about the PSAs. Do we have a, have we already paid for those? So we paid for the PSAs. So the maps that we've been paid for, okay. the only thing outstanding is the radio. So we just haven't secured those spots, but we're, we're really close to doing that. And so do okay. we want to get that money spent. Yeah, just a quick update on that. That's been one day or three days. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of information to get to you. So we'll be doing that. Okay. When, so I forgot about that. You can go out to the fund then by the end of July. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Because I know it's like, oh, it's you're just, well, no, because your fiscal year is September 30th. September 30th. Yeah, but I want to say, and I was thinking it could be obligated by Joe Myers. So. Okay. Just the big we're, stuff. We're good then. We'll get it knocked out. We'll get it knocked out. Okay. All right, so we'll be okay. I'm going right. to try and get it to Okay. Done. Yeah. yeah. So is that it for finance? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to send it the Okay. Well, then let's go to the CWPP Community Wildfire Protection Plan. Update, Ken Brewer, are you gonna give us that update? Yeah. Um, so the, the update on the last two meetings updates are that we're, the core team is continuing to meet. We got the, a lot of things pretty well finalized. The draft Louie is, is ready and, uh, and we have some public meetings scheduled for next week. These locations and times from 6.30 to 7.30 would be an open house format. And uh, so we'll have three or four tables, maybe five with a, one doing a presentation of the story map, maybe. Um, the story map is now live as of a few days ago i sent that out to the to the fire and root cwpp and i'll bring it up here in a second when we're and done uh, and so that's a wealth of information on what's happened what's happening what's going to happen and what to watch for um so that's the that's the short version yeah and, so uh, make sure that um, these dates are on the story map also and on Fire in the Roots Facebook page, right? So you don't have to jot it down right now, but it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week, and it'll be the same format at all three meetings. So if you want to attend, you can just attend the one that's nearest to your home, right? The Tuesday night one will be here, and then you see the other locations there. Where is the search and rescue building? On the north end of Hamilton by the uh, flooring places up there. The, the, on the west side, side of that. that. Or the west side of the road. Yeah. Yes, you know where the SO is, the yeah. river right there off us. It's like then there's auto zone just north of that. Uh, the search and rescue building. And the post on Facebook has the address associated with it. So there is uh, on the county website. Yeah, it's out on the, the county yeah. website. The story map, as well, the story map, and also the information on. I yes. Well, I've given all my copies away that I made. Uh, the, the, uh, yes. 
it's, it's all now on the county website. Yeah. And the, and the, these meetings are within the story map, and any future meetings will be there. So the story map, I think, is the is the real key. You check that often enough, anything that comes up that's new will be on it. And so there's it'll be linked on our site starting tomorrow. Is that right? Tomorrow or the next day? Well, it's already on, it's linked on Fire in the Root um, website. Um, I'll put a link on the Facebook page, but it's already, if you go to Fire in the Root, the, the web, our website, um, there's a link and it'll take you into the story map. And then I asked Ken whether it was noticed in the paper and he said it should be. I have twice. twice. Twice in the Ravalli Republic before the meeting, so... Yeah, I haven't seen it yet, so I guess it is uh, coming. I didn't, I didn't see it today, but it, uh, that doesn't mean it wasn't there. It no, it may be like tomorrow and Friday or tomorrow and Monday or something it like that. Be Thursday and Saturday. Or not Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, but if you want, if you guys want, I'll just scroll through the story map. Ken, did you have anything else to add or did you just want me to? Uh, you can, I mean, the headers in this story map are pretty self explanatory. Yeah, so there are tabs here that you can click on, but it's also designed so that you can literally just scroll and it'll then bounce through those tabs, right? So there's a bunch of links. I tested all, all of them, I'm sure, but lots of people tested them before I did, but everything worked for me. And I can usually break anything, so, <laughs> so that's good. So neat little maps um, that you, if you click on that, it'll show you the fires from the 1970s, 78 to 89, 70s to 99, to 2009, and then to present. So, so there's a few fires on my, on my map. <laughs> so it's just pretty neat because you know it's interactive and you can just keep keep scrolling. Um Roaring Lion video that we've all talk, seen is talk, talks about Roaring Lion. Then you know, talks about the CWPP. So if someone asks you a question, send them here. You know, this is good information. Um here's the um, video about the Better Root Front. Then just talking more about the Valley County and the CWPP. Then goes through a whole lot of um, frequently asked questions. And Ten of them, I think. yeah, I'll you can you click here on the after. side and it'll it'll run through it. <clears throat> and then here at the bottom, if, you know, or if you click there for public engagement. It has the information on the public meetings with the addresses um, and the times, and then the rest of the schedule that that's left. You know, so by November they hope to have a draft. Then that will be open for public review, and then hopefully by January we're done. So um, I encourage you all to yeah go go find the link, and I'll put put it on. Um, our Facebook page, but it is on our page and it's on the county website. Um, it's it's pretty neat. Anything to add? To? Well, it's, it's going to be a really valuable resource for us and for everybody else. And uh, if you've got some suggestions on things that aren't there that you think should be, bring them up when we're having these updates and then we can feed it back to a bunch of us on the 14th. We can feed it back into the process. And keep in mind this, this now ends with, you know, sort of, this is the precursor to the CWP. Once it's finalized, the story map will be updated with more of the things that went into the CWP, right? So, so keep, keep that in mind. This is, just up to now where we are. Other question? <clears throat> not, not a question, but just the additional of uh, the uh, collaborative meeting last night. 
Um, right now, we're kind of in a holding pattern as far as projects we're working on. Uh, we also went through this last uh, at our meeting last night and we're going to adapt. What uh, suggestions that we could use from the council here is what can we do to help with the, product, the, the education and the word out to the public here? And if that's something you can put together, maybe email me that I get on and see. But... Yeah, I mean, just um, right now, just spreading the word on the public meeting dates. You know, if you need a flyer or, or if you can share from Facebook or send out on a mailing list. Um, just so that people are aware, you know, of the, the public meeting dates. That that really is the thing. So and and that has gone out and it also went yeah. to uh, every realtor in the in our board. And then the link to the story map, because that yeah. will if people have no clue what it is, the CWPP, this story map does a good job of at least giving them some background so they know what public meeting they're attending, right? Well, and it, the, the announcement that the group uh, Put out and sent out does have a link to the the county website. Go through basically the, the same information. Yes. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So that people can then look at that. Right. So the one suggestion that I would have for the collaborative, I know you're here most of the time. Um, Margaret, of course, he was here for a number of meetings, representing specifically representing the collaborative. But then her attendance has fallen off. And I think that if between the two of you, if you're if okay. someone is always here and always hears this information, it'll improve our communication a lot. Uh, normally our meeting is before the collaborative, but the way that the... but but that's okay if there's a if there's a lifetime, because it's not like this turns on a dime. You know, so so if there's a lag time, that's okay. But but and and I'll talk to Margaret. I think she and Skip are, are traveling this week. Yeah. But but I'll but I will remind her that it's probably a really good thing from a communication standpoint, yeah. if nothing else, if if you guys are both here. So so that's the one thing that I would say would help. And then, and then we're we're not trying to freak each other on things. We hear it at the same time. Right. Do we have time to just see the answer to the question about what what does this do for me as a private person? Is it a short answer? Uh, yeah, that's something that with the information collaborative that uh, we can probably help out with. But once it's in place, a lot of grant money available. That's what I was going to comment on maybe is make a list for people that live in the Valley County to see how many grants we're missing out on because the CWP is not in place. And then have associate a dollar amount that's like, hey, just because we don't have this, we are missing out on this fund funds. We would really appreciate it if the community got on board to help us support us through this process and let us. And, and have that association so they can see that dollar. Right. There's no dollar amount on there, but it does, but it does specifically identify the fact that if your CWPP is more than 10 years old, you are not competitive or eligible for a whole bunch of grants. It's exactly what's up here. That's, yeah. Well, yeah. that's one of the 10 or so questions. questions. Yeah. So that after these public meetings. <laughs> We may have some more of these frequently asked questions. And that's all, that's all I was getting at because they might not understand that. Just thinking about the audience as a whole, right? They might not have been state or federal employees or never put in for a grant. So right. I might not actually understand that whole process entirely. Right. And what we're actually missing out. That's who our audience is. It's and people that are not agents. Associated with that, like within the state or show a success story, for example. Like this, this group county over here in Montana finished with CWPP, and then they, uh, because they were one of the first ones to get it completed, updated in the 10 year time frame, they were able to apply for up to 100, 
thousand dollars for the grant. No, that's a great idea because we have Libby just received the student assistance grant for five million. Blackfoot Allen has a scroll a little bit up. Four months. Like so let's see. Okay. I would make that trans awesome. Try to bring the full round to that audience. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's what we're trying to get there. Yeah. Right? Well, that's our safety. She gets it. Their state collaborative that they really do as far as exactly what these grants are. And Steve went through things real fast last night on Zoom. Couldn't, uh, I couldn't hardly hear him to start with, and then uh, there, everybody else had problems too. So we said, we're asking for him to get us a list of the information and what's available. So it's something we can work with. There is, yeah. a number of, there is a number of grants that we put in for us that are not tied to uh, this 10 year. Time like between CWCC, uh, Western States Governors Association grant, uh, the Hazard Fuels grants that we can put in for every quarter. Those two in particular, we do not need an updated CWCC. We just have to have one, which we do currently. Okay. So, so those I don't see changing over time. But when you get into the uh, the one that Blackfoot challenged, uh, the Community Wildfire Defense Grant, uh, that's the one that specifically says that you have to have a CWCP less than 10 years old. That's the one we had in the preaching ass. And we're in a position so right now. That Steve was talking about last night yeah. was one that would be directly affected with uh, getting this passed. Yeah. And I don't, I can't remember about the forest action plan grant. Do you, do you remember how that word is? Do you have to have a CWCP? You don't. Actually, I'm sure. Did I not say? No, I don't think it is tied to. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it is either. It's tied more to the forest yeah, action plan. That's not going to change. Yeah, it's the forest action plan. Yeah. She yeah. said last night on what, what he was talking about. Right now, there's two sides to it. One as far as still with the implementation of the CWPP, and then once it's, the action happens, there's two sides to this money that's coming for it. Yeah. And he's talking like $100 million to $500 million. So we got the grant to, to update it already. And that's what we're, and we're using grant funds. But no, there's the, 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 the a different than that, too. Yeah. That the stuff is stuff that's coming up. Yeah. Yeah, that's part of the infrastructure bill. Yeah. Basically. Well, I think the written answer here looks like it's going to be the right answer for our general audience. But so that's something that uh Steve uh met our uh, one of our folks here that the uh, collaborative boss mentioned part of the success stories. One of the videos going out the video as far as what this is what it looked like before, this is what it does now, or even after the fire comes through, that this home was safe, kind of like roaring lines of equation. And stuff like that that we, we may be able to help. We're also looking at maybe trying to find some funding for some grants for doing part of this too to help out in different areas. Great. Yeah, well, Corey's pointed to that. I think it would be really great to have before the meetings is a, is a sheet that says, okay, these are things that we know we could access better with the CWP and these would be the benefits to the community. Yeah, and, and examples that, of that communities that already got it to look at. Uh, as their yeah. Yeah. Well, well we, actually, I mean, we do. I mean, that's that's in there. It specifically says what we can and, and can't access in the absence of a uh, of an updated CWP, but so we don't have. I think these an example or a couple of examples would be really good because they're not speculative. We're not making stuff up. We're, we're not even. We're just saying. So here, here's what can happen if you have an updated CWP. Now, a couple of examples would go a long ways for that, and we probably round something up before next week. But even if we don't, we can add them to the frequently asked questions. Right. Later. Yeah. Well I'm I'm doing the kind of what is the CWPP table. Yeah. And I'm providing the FAQs and um I can easily, you know, just add some examples of, you know, here's what communities in Montana have received by having and I'll see you in CWPP. Just a couple of good examples. Well, let's see, I'm, 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 I'm
the one example that uh, I can throw out is uh, after January of 2024, when the uh, Community Wildfire Defense Grant opened back up in 2024, uh, we're in a position to apply for over $2 million for the Valley County. Oh, that's scary. Okay, so that's that's going to be a go. Uh, not that we'll get a word of it, but we're going to apply for it. Okay. But so we won't get a word of it if we don't apply. That's right. And if right. we don't have to see that, we're going to be able to do that yeah. after January yeah. 2020. Okay. And I think really to have with that table, because people will go to the website, maybe. I mean, you know, I'm guilty of, I didn't get there in the last three days. But, you know, you just, oh yeah, there's a website, but there's a page that you take this home with you. So it's to your spouse, your cousin, your whoever. Neighbors. And, you know, and then it's going to be circular files and obviously observation about that. But I think that that is just something that will reach more people that we want to reach back. And I guess right there. The other thing that uh, it's the biggest objective for applying for these grants is the protection of life, property, and other values at risk within Ravalli County. So that's the reason why the CWPP is so important. Sounds like we're ready. Yeah. Hopefully, people will show up and ask questions. Yeah, that's the biggest thing we can do. Are we, we ready? Get past this thing, like when we started this discussion of the Wooly, there were members of the core team that said, "Well, this is just a funding map." Well, no, it's not a funding map. The reason that you get the funding is the reason that you make the map, and the reason that we have a Wooly, not to get the funds, but to do the work that we yeah. can do with the yeah. funds. Right, and so. If we don't get that point across, we're not ready. So anyway. Who's at that table? Who's answering the wooey questions? We're double team in that. One. Okay, good. <laughs> I think I they know, got it. That rural can be done or not, we get pretty good thing to stop explaining that so we have collaborate last Well, last we should season. move on to the outreach team yes. updates. <laughs> These are both I think Judy just cut you off. It's not a funding map. Judy didn't say it was a funding map. No, he did not. Good. Why the East Side looks the way it does. All right. Okay. Outreach team. Outreach team. Lots going on. Our air quality grant program. Eurista just had kind of a final meeting on that to close out on it. And so. Um, she said in comparison to a lot of the other recipients of the, the grant, you know, ours handed out a lot of filters and, and um, seemed to be doing a really, really good job. So kudos to Carissa and Laura. Yeah, uh, I'll add to that. Yeah, thanks, Laura, for being the contact or bridging that gap with Peru Climate Action Group. It was... Um, an easy partnership and an easy collaboration. And with them also providing money and, and us, we handed out 55 air purifiers to um, people that needed it in the county. We have about five left. One we will maybe give away at the public meetings. We'll have people put their names in a hat and then maybe one over social media, but We'll have a couple in our back pocket if things get bad in summer and we have people with need um, reach out to either Sarah or, or us. But um, yeah, I just wanted to say, yeah, thank Laura for well, that. Thank you, because it was four times, five times as many buildings as we would have had. Yeah, I mean, our little group. yeah, so oh, it was it great. Was a win win. Yeah. We should probably have one at the, at the, uh, at the fair and people fill out. And we'll do a drawing. Yeah, we thought about that too. By the time the fair rolls around, we'll see if we have, you know, more to give away. But that was one of the ideas to have one at the fair. 
That was the library presentation. Yeah, that was yeah. the library presentation. Um, but we'll keep plugging away at it. And if you know of any HOAs that might be interested in having your ESPA come and do a presentation, like that's a great outlet also, right? Yeah, so, the Stock Farm HOA invited us. That was going to be tomorrow. But then when that plane crashed, they canceled with us. Yeah. 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 The other five sending our guiding presenter to schools. Well, the Anna used to do that. Future, but like the, the has an educational. Program. Yeah, that's a thing. Our message is not entirely like when Anna went. It's like more smoky stuff, right? It's not. Oh, you have to work on the HID when we talk to the fourth graders. So it's sort of different. But do, but the fourth graders go home. Right. No, they they yeah. just learn what HIZ yeah. means. That's a big yeah. deal. I was just talking about this yesterday with the Bitterroot Conservation Districts. Um, I met Kay at the extension front a few weeks ago. And she and I are talking about what grants we can apply for so that I can start going to schools and doing a lot of that education with kids because I've got a little bit of background in like elementary education, um, just loosely nothing, you know, like I wasn't a teacher, um, but start talking to kids about like native plants, pollinators, the watershed, airshed, why that's important. Native plants versus like, don't just take whatever plant looks pretty and plant it in your yard because it's very invasive. Um, and then talk to older kids about like, hey, this is what you can look at, you know, trying to keep it age appropriate and not scare them out of their minds. And then when they're in high school, have a program that's more geared towards like, hey, take a look at your house, talk to your parents about this. They may not know, you know, this is how, it's like, I remember being in high school and getting a call at 3 a.m. from a friend because there was a huge grass fire in Florence. It was like about to jump the road. And I mean, we didn't know anything about wildfire. So um, I actually just started talking to a friend about that and seeing what we can come up with. And then just general, you know, community education. I want to do like a sovereign clause event and like teach people how to solve and what? Chainsaws and white claws. <laughs> white and, uh, claws. The new, is, well, not new anymore, but like the hard seltzers. Oh. So basically just make it a fun, like, <laughs> I would run a chainsaw and not cut your leg off. And I well with that. Anything over here. Oh, you know, if you spit out your whiskey at the same time. Um, <laughs> But no, just doing like some fun, really engaging community events to get people out, um, especially people who I don't like running chainsaws or they think they're going to just come to life and cut your leg off being like, no, I promise that won't happen. And just help people start thinking about it more proactively. Yeah, we would probably need to connect you with one of our other members who isn't here tonight. We talked about doing a chainsaw safety event. Yeah, and I would say, Nicole, the big thing that, like, one of the reasons this is here is that coordination piece, right? If everybody's doing these shotgun things and not talking, we have duplicity and we have different messages getting out. And so you being here is awesome. Keep coming. So that we are all saying the same message and we can support you. You can support us. Correct. We're all working together. And like Laura was saying on the educational front, there is education being done, but that is something that that there isn't a lot of coordination. And so maybe that's a future goal that we can play is 
is helping to tie things together. And that was great input for the CWPP. The first CWPP, they had a whole curriculum. Remember that, Mark? Or was that the second one that was in science? That had the whole curriculum. So, ah, okay, the second CWPP that was in science um, had a whole curriculum that they wanted to look and implement. And like that type of stuff is, is perfectly adequate for a CWPP. And if it's in that CWPP, we can probably get funding for it and you know then bring the, the, the great smoky presentation and the fire department so if, if the education and outreach is actually in the action plan but it's very fluid at this point you've had uh, in the priority area but also very fluid at this point they're not on this story map but they, those are the kinds of things that will go into the CW3P and, uh, and I mean, there's no reason in the world we can't go back to the curriculum from the second one that wasn't signed and dust it off, update it as needed and bring it forward. Yeah. And there's, there's no point in reinventing something just because we didn't implement it last year. No. We don't see it. So. But the key is put those comments in. Right. Because the action table is not finalized because it's not even close okay, to because we need the comments. Like that's why we have these public meetings, is to get public input. And if in every comment is analyzed. And so if there's 50 comments from the Hamilton area that's saying we want uh you know K through 12 education that's emphasizing HIV, then we're going to be like, this is important. We've heard a lot of it, right? And so me and my friends and neighbors are going to be like, oh, I'm sorry. going to be concerned. There'll be stuff. comment sheets, so that you don't have to go onto a website or think about going onto a website to fill it out. Yeah. You can just write it down and drop it in a box. Yeah. So. Okay. So is there ever going to be one farmer market time that you're going to be farmers market one? It just seems like that's an ideal place. Every time I, every Saturday I go there, yeah. there's just a, a mm -hmm. slew of folks that come through there. And that just seems like one of the best catchment areas. Well, the outreach team is going to work on that. Yeah, we're, we're hoping yeah. maybe August. Because we're not doing it for the whole season, we kind of have to take when there's a spot available. So, but yeah, so I just put them in. Yeah. So I just emailed them today, and they sound like they have sponsors. But they're four hundred and forty dollars for the plus season. Yeah, and then we don't No, but but if you just take a one, single we just want one Saturday, then it's thirty five bucks. Yeah, we don't want to pay four hundred and something. No, I don't either. Okay, so where are we? Keep it local. <laughs> Guide is out. You all should have received it in your mailboxes, the post office boxes and every location. Guides were out. And um, so yeah, go take a look if you haven't. I know Judy brought the relocation guide last last night. Byron's video was made, was filmed. Yay. Yeah, Byron. Heard it was awesome. And um, and the videographer is working on it. I think he told me we might see some things in August. Okay. And then he also has a whole bunch of B roll and, and stock film that he sounded like he would be willing to create video PSAs for us, the video public service announcements. Um, and we utilize, like for the prevention team that Harrison and I help with, uh, we utilize 30 second videos on most of our messaging platforms, what we can afford, and it, it provides a pretty good punch. Um, and so give me ideas if you have some, and not just the subject, but give me a whole little script. You know, what What do you see playing in 30 seconds, and what is that text? So I shared the document. I haven't gotten any input on that, but I'll, I'll tell anybody here, you know, send it to myself or your assessment. Um, and give us some ideas because if he has the film already, he just has to kind of put it together and then put the text in there. Or audio. So, right. um, send us your ideas. 
landscaping brochures and final drafts, uh, shading and Vanessa. Sure it is, sort of. <laughs> we are so much further apart, right? Yes, we are. <laughs> Awesome. The and difficult so, thing has been finding photographs that are very specific yeah. examples of what landscaping could look like next to siding, next to fencing. But I saw some awesome pictures on a website and I've asked them for permission to use their photos. So maybe we will have something really awesome. Because yeah. that's the other problem. Either it's low quality or there's a fine line between just grabbing a picture from a site. You know, I don't want to like blatantly just steal yeah. pictures, right? So copyright issues are an issue. Yeah. Well, if they're if they're not being put in for profit materials, usually the licensing allows for. Yeah, but say you say usually, and that I don't want to. <laughs> Um, check with the ones the Missoula Americorps office because when I was there in 2019, we both before and after photos. Um, I think they were mostly from our cell phones, so they may not be amazing, but if they're going to be smaller, it might work. But that's also assuming that everything is still saved on their computers, but they might have something. And that was which office? Uh, the Western Wildlands Americorps office, just the one on Tool Street, I think. Okay. And so I'm going to probably give you background on this is a landscaping worker that isn't just like the, you know, the extension list of um, fire resistant plants. It's actually the idea of mapping out your landscaping and how to do that according to HIC, what to plant where and why. And our specific audience is gardeners. Um, yeah. so that's talked to, is it great fair nursery? Yeah. Yeah. This is what we have right now. <clears throat> Definitely still needs to be tweaked. So it's, a, it's supposed to be a four page thing. There you go. Eight by 11. Um, it's not there yet. We'll get there. <laughs> no, but um, most of these pictures I grab of Canva because if you have Canva Professional, then those pictures are included, so you don't have to worry about um, copyright. Then we'll have something on the HIZ with pictures that demonstrate which zone we refer to, and then examples of flowers that could be perennials or pollinator favorites or natives, and then the fact still needs a little bit of work. But just to give you guys an idea, this is what we've been working on. So, there we go. Maybe you could just have someone come photograph them on your house. Well, you know, I tried, but she didn't like the pictures. Well, it's hard to get the right perspective. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. It is. Anyways, okay, Chris. Okay. Farmer's market we just discussed, so we're still trying on that. And uh, um, maps, as we talked about earlier, our PSAs uh, have been paid for and received, and they're awesome. Great and we'll play that after this yeah. slide. We're going to play it. Yes. And so we'll play those in just a minute. And that, our next step is working on the, the, the KLYQ spots. There is one of them that does mention the CWCP. And so if we can get that, thank you, sir. If we can get that um, playing before the public meetings, that will be good. Um, and we may even be able to ask like to to mention the public meetings following that PSA. They often throw in stuff like that. So remember that I put that right because that's, that would be a good ask of them. Um, we, as an outreach team, we were working on the CWP. FAQ, we provided a lot of input to that. And I I do want to point out that that story map is out because of us. That story map is out now because of us, because you guys requested that there was some sort of information earlier than at the end when the CWPP was basically finished. And so pat yourself on the back and know that your comments actually 
you know, pay off because I think it's awesome that we have this story mapped out because it's engaging and now people can go and figure out why it's important for them to provide input and they can see a lot of the answers to those questions and arguments that we all know are pervasive. <clears throat> so good job. And you know, it, it, it matters. Um, County Fair, so coming up, and um, I'm, I'm not sure how you guys are going to start with this year, but we are here to help. <laughs> so um, usually, you know, the, the bitter spearheads gets the booth. I'm sure that's already secured because I bet you Anna had to get it like a year ago. Yeah. And so, yeah, there's there's the booth there. We definitely want to support and help. It is a great place to get the word out. And Judy is awesome at getting home assessment plans. What? Judy? No. Oh, oh, Judy Jeff, right may there. not be standing in the booth this year. So we need volunteers to be oh, thinking yeah. about yeah. helping out. Yeah. What's, what's yeah. the other guy look like? Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, I don't even know what's going on with that yet, but so I um it just preemptively I did up a a, a so sign up sheet. <laughs> <laughs> That's not quite the word preemptive. <laughs> She's planning I, optimistically. Yeah, it's optimistically. So we'll circulate this out. The idea is. I use the time slots that Anna has had in the past figuring that will be about the same. The dates are the uh, August 30th through uh, the 2nd of September this year. And so they're in like three hour blocks. Um, and I've got one spot for the person who will be there and then a backup spot so that we just, we, we can have two people there, but if the person who initially signed up can't make it, we have a backup spot. We weren't, there was the thought um, of if we wanted to pay for tickets, um, that that might be an incentive for you as well, right? Because tickets are $10. And to volunteer, you need a ticket. Anybody who comes in needs a ticket, even if they're just volunteering at the table. I believe the bidder only gets two free tickets with their purchase of the food. And so um, if everybody's good with the council paying for tickets for all of us who are going to be staffing, then you get a free ticket. You, you got to work three hours, but then you have a free ticket to the fair. Three hours goes really fast. And it's fun because there's a lot of people that come to the booth. It, and it is. There's, it's, it's a lot of activity. And the bidder has always shown up. Like, there are always, like, you guys do a great job, district rangers. I, I worked with Matt Anderson, the forest supervisor, last year. And so, I mean, it's it's just a great opportunity to um, share in that work, but outreach and, and support. So, one, is the council okay with us? Spending money on tickets for those who do sign up of the council. Tax. I don't see anybody shaking their head. No. no. If you have an objection, you should raise your hand right now. No okay. objections. And then Judy will come with you with her crutch. Okay, so that will be <laughs> that will be something we can we can pay for. And then uh, um yeah, and we'll send out in probably the next the next with the notes and the, the Timing wise, we can, be okay. yeah, or we can just send something out in okay. between, all right, just for a sign up. Okay, but if you know you want to volunteer, just put your name on the list, yeah, even if you're not entirely sure of times, right? Then you can sort out time slots, yeah. So you can sign up here or send me an email and I can send you the form so you can look at it too. Kristen, so, yeah, once you get the docket full, if you go to Melissa and talk to her. At, uh, at the fair office, say we've got 22 volunteers, we're going to get two free tickets. We'd like a discount for oh. the other 18 tickets. Yeah, great idea. You might knock two bucks off or five bucks off. Okay. 
Right so, and if she says no, <laughs> would you call me? <laughs> I'll say, okay, I will let Albert know that you said no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll suggest it that I talk to you. Yeah, I'll say that. <laughs> thing is reducing wildfires cleans the air. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, and, or even the smoke management, just it is smoking because it probably will be smoking. Here, oh, I'll read. Because it will be smoking. We really don't like that. Yeah, I, so I think that it's smoking, we're not going to die. Um, and, and yeah, and the CWTC, like that, actually, the story map, pointing that out, having them. Um, okay. I mean, it came up on it. I mean, it's not about it. Yeah, I just, I, I, I wanted to say that. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to tip me up if. The fair is where we get a lot of signups for home assessments. So we spend a lot of time talking to people about that's something you can do to reduce your risk or know what your risk is, and you'll get the suggestions and you can decide whether you want to do any of those or not. We also talk a lot um, about evacuation, right? We hand out the evacuation checklists, and um, I what helped me the first time I work the booths with Kristen, we have all the materials. And so you just kind of ask people where they live, you know, because if they live in town, then maybe they don't worry that much, but they may still have pets, you know, and need to have an evacuation plan in place. And, you know, kind of guide yourself by the materials that, that are available that you can give them and that's all. So it's not, I usually start a conversation with, do you live in or near the forest? Or do you have questions about your wildfire risk? Yeah. yeah, it's not rocket science, you know, and after a few people came by, you you figure out what people want to know, and so you can answer the questions. Where's the county fair? When? Just Labor just Day. Day. Yeah. But the rain is on your... Yeah. 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 Once we know who wants to volunteer, we'll just have us like a meeting with yeah, everyone. A couple of little bullet points of like your next meeting. Yeah. So we're putting together the cheat sheet yeah, for, the, uh, for the open house. So and we do the same thing for the fifth. Yeah. And, and it'll probably relate to the frequently asked questions. And um, we obviously we'll have a bunch of stuff on home assessments that are not, not in those cheat sheets now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's, is there going to be a CWTP specific booth at the fair also? No, yeah. no. It's a fire in the root booth and it's associated with the Forest Service booth. They're right there together. Yeah. It's, I think it's the bitter root booth that we, so, that we kind of form in. Just put your corner up. Yes. So, welcome. Right. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And we point people to Smokey. Go have a picture taken with Smokey. <laughs> and can I give a quick update on the uh, Secret Garden Tour? It's this Saturday. And 300 people bought tickets to come tracing through my garden and four other gardens. And they are allowing me to talk about wildfire risk. 
for so. anybody that wants to listen. So I'll get a few people there. I'll talk as long as I can. And it's from nine to four. So that's a lot of people that I could potentially talk you to. Want a and table with, with brochures and <laughs> the brochure, the fire in the root brochure got in all their goodie bags when they bought a ticket, they got a little goodie bag and the brochure was in there. That's good. Good job, Judy. Yeah. Thanks. Good. 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 And I'll take them on my deck and show them where I have risk. <laughs> yeah. So I'll follow up afterwards, but don't leave them up there. It's a space for me. So uh, next meeting is 10 a.m. For the at, outreach team. Yes, for the outreach team at duty. Duty, is that still okay? Yeah. Okay. So I don't want you to be somewhat invalided again. So. <laughs> yeah. So Tom's taking care of it all. At 715, we'll have the pancake breakfast here. And we'll set up our live trailer again here. Oh, right. On Saturday? The 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 yeah. Yeah. Any Anything else on this slide, Kristen? Yeah, I offer volunteer for everything. And I have a t shirt that says, I am an HIV contractor. <laughs> if we had those shirts, sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll just get a shirt for y'all. <laughs> get something for me. <laughs> Well, yeah. if you get business that helps people hire their own, they that in the service of what our goal is. I mean, we're just, um, what's the word you're saying? I just got a couple of um example kits from different company companies or like wasp sprinklers, and I'm working with platypus sprinklers. And I was trying to work with bulk invents, but they're impossible to reach and then um got our better guards to make sure that i've got a lot of materials on here so that people can say oh i need this and i'm like cool let me go pull it out of my garage well it's just a business card i mean that's fair enough yeah. i mean it be a service we can encourage people to get it for it to be fun all right kristen i assume you were done yeah okay so before we head out of here we wanted to play you guys the, the PSAs and thank Rick again for all his um, effort that he put in. Okay, so we'll, I don't know how the volume is, we'll find out. You need to learn before you burn. What do you mean? It looks like you need to burn some debris. A permit is required, but don't worry. It's free. How do I get one? Visit fireintheroot.org and click on burn permit to get yours today. Don't forget to renew annually and activate every day you burn. Visit fireintheroot.org for tips on safe debris burning. This method was brought to you by the Fire in the Root Council and Mass Media Institute. Very good. <laughs> nice. All right. Yeah, All right. Yeah, very good. Did you know that unsafe debris burning was the number one cause of human started wildfires in 2022? How do I do it the right way? Let's go through the safe debris burning checklist. Do you have your required permit? Check. Have you activated each day of your burn? Check. Are you only burning natural materials and vegetation? Check. Do you have water, tools, and other people present to attend the fire at all times? Check. Sounds like you're ready to burn safe. Visit fireintheroot.org for more tips on safe debris burning. This method was brought to you by the Fire and the Root Council and Mass Media Institute. Wildfires are inevitable, but losing your home doesn't have to be. Do I know what my home's wildfire risk is? Visit fireintheroot.org and click on Be Prepared. From there, you can learn about your home ignition zone and how you can reduce your risk of wildfire. Sound like a cool resource. At fireintheroot.org, stay current on the Ravalli County Community Wildfire Protection Plan update process. That process helps address wildfire risk across the Bitterroot Valley. This method was brought to you by the Fire and the Root Council and Mass Media Institute. Right. Want to hear something scary? Always. Seven out of ten wildfires in Ravalli County are human caused. You mean by <laughs> people?
Yes, but if we all do our part, we can make sure the only heat we feel is from the hot summer sun. Ah. Before you go outdoors to enjoy our beautiful state, visit mtfireinfo.org for up-to-date information on active fires and fire restrictions across Montana. This message was brought to you by the Fire in the Root Council and Max Media Institute. I love fireworks. So do I. Sparkles, the ones that smell like skunk. Do you even know where you're allowed to use fireworks? It's anywhere, right? Eh, wrong. Fireworks are actually prohibited on state and federal public lands. So what's the best way to enjoy that beautiful sparkle and skunk smell? Watch a professional local show. I promise you there'll be sparkles and the skunk smell. Visit fireintheroot.org for more info on fireworks safety and regulations. This message was brought to you by the Fire and the Root Council and Mass Media Institute. Did you know campfires can escape or be abandoned? Those poor fires? Poor fires? Seven out of ten wildfires in Ravalli County are actually caused by humans. Like you and me? Definitely not. Visit mtfireinfo.org for info on fire restrictions in place in the Bitterroot Valley and across Montana. If campfires are allowed, never leave yours unattended. Make sure it's dead out before you go. If it's hot to the touch, it's too hot to leave. <laughs> What's that? The voice. Who's voice? I don't know. Some of the kids in the program. Skateboarding, smoking dope.